Hey guys, it's Anne. Welcome to the channel. And uh, if you're new here, uh, my channel is mostly about vermicomposting, worm farming, and in particular going through and debunking some of the myths about what you can and cannot feed your worms. And this particular project, I have a t-shirt or several t-shirts in here that the worms are attempting to eat. So let's dig in here and see what's going on. It's been about a month. I can put a, a picture below to see what's going on there as far as what we fed last time in addition to the t-shirts. Looks like we're getting pretty, pretty wet in here right now, and that is the turn of season here where I live. It is spring. The humidity in my basement is, you know, well over 50%. And these are inside worms. They stay inside all year long, um, mostly because my... My environment here in the United States, in Illinois, we go from very large extremes to, you know, very hot in the summer, almost 100 degrees Fahrenheit or over 100 degrees. And then in the winter, we get to the, you know, 30 to 40 below zero, uh, but below freezing. And I'll put the Celsius equivalent in there. So my worms are mostly inside. They live in my cellar of my big old house. The basement's not good for anything else except for worms, so I, I have a lot of worms. All right, well, one of the reasons that I'm able to do all of these uh, weird things is that I have a really well-established ecosystem in my worm bins, which means I have a lot of helpers. You can tell that this t-shirt has got mold on it, and if you look closely, you can see that there are mites and springtails and we might even see some pill bugs in here but it might be too wet for them usually in the winter when it's drier I see more pill bugs but here is one of the t-shirts that they've been working on and they're doing a really good job I'll put a picture below as to what this t-shirt looked like last time um, I don't cut off all of the seams, which are probably going to end up being taken out at the end because most of the time they stitch t-shirts with some sort of polyester um, thread. So that ends up coming out. And let's see, I have some right over here to show you. So this, it almost looks like snakeskin, doesn't it? Uh, this is what the stitching looks like on your t-shirt after the worms eat all of your cotton t-shirt. So there's more than one t-shirt in here. Let's see what this guy's doing. This is one of the newer ones. And one of the things that I saw with London worms was that if the t-shirt is poly blend instead of 100% cotton, um, you may end up with, instead of it completely coming apart like this 100% cotton, you'll end up with this weird mesh. And I'm starting to wonder if this t-shirt isn't a poly blend. Because it's not. It, it's kind of becoming more stretchy, but it's not pulling apart. So I'm wondering if that's what we have here. So that should be interesting going forward to see if we just end up with, like, pantyhose, I guess, is what I would explain that their project showed, that after using a poly t-shirt, there was something left behind that looked kind of like pantyhose. Well, I'm not seeing any of the people food that they were fed last time except for those big seeds. So it looks like they've got more than enough bedding, but they definitely could use some more people food to keep them going. So we'll put the 100% cotton one in the bottom over there, and then we'll put this one that I think is probably poly, like maybe 50% cotton or something. It doesn't have a tag on it because I'm one of those people that pulls them off. So I don't really know what this is made out of. I assumed it was cotton just based on the way it, feel, it felt when I put it in the bin, but it, it looks like I'm wrong. So let's get these guys some food. Okay, so this is kind of a weird one too. This is um, rice, like, like, I don't know, it comes in a kit. It's rice and vegetables and chicken and onions. So that's going to be interesting. Oftentimes when you feed rice, it will have this really seriously blue mold on there. 
And there are little bits of chicken in here, but I don't think it's enough to, to do anything weird or, you know, require a separate experiment. And then there's tea bags, and then there's onions, all of which do totally fine. My prepared bedding has got cardboard and paper, coconut coir, um, and it's got its own grit source in there with the eggshell. So that should be just fine. This is a really established bin that has all of the helpers it needs. I'll put below how long this experiment's been going, but the longer your bins go, the more they can handle complicated or more, you know, forbidden food. And that is something that's really important to, to know, is that when you're first starting or you just started a brand new bin and it doesn't have all of the critters in there, you can't really feed as much. And so, you know, that's important to remember, like, if you want to feed more food to your worms, you have to wait until not only you get more worms from them breeding, but also you have to wait for all of the um, bin helpers in the environment to also populate the bin so that you can go ahead and get them to eat more food and keep things out of the landfill. All right, guys. Well, if you're liking the video, give it a muddy thumbs up. If you're not a member of my worm family, click that subscribe button. And if you want to see more projects, I will click them there and there. All right, guys. Thanks for hanging out with me and my worms. And everybody, have a good day.